Church. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, April the 5th, 2020. I have just a couple of announcements before we move into our time of worship together today. First of all, um, this coming Thursday night, which is Monday, Thursday, um, we will have a time of worship posted on our Facebook page and also sent into your emails at approximately 7.30 p.m. It will include a time of communion as we remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples that night before they went out into the Garden of Gethsemane. Also on Saturday, um, there is a, um, a special event for preschoolers and elementary age kids in the Valley. It is just the handing out from the parking lot across from the Orristown Bank, the handing out of some Easter goodie bags from three o'clock to five o'clock p.m. on Saturday, this Saturday, April the 11th, um, in the parking lot. And they will be very careful with social distancing and also will be taking non-contamination precautions so that we can get the Easter message out to as many kids in our valleys as possible. So please pass the word on if you could. Um, next, I'm not sure exactly who made this for me. You see? So somebody loves me. So thank you. I, I think it might have been Kathy Adams or maybe Donna Adams. I'm not sure, but I now have my own Penn State mask for when I go out and I'm happy with that. So thank you very much. What a time that we are in, right? But we are in it, and God is in it with us. Let's um, listen to these words as we begin our time of worship from Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world and the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all peoples see his glory. Let's worship God together. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to my kitchen on another uh, beautiful Sunday. I was going to do this outside, but it's just way too windy. The wind just won't calm down long enough for you guys to be able to hear me. So we're in my kitchen again. And do you guys know what today is? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Well, it's not anything to do with our hands, but it is Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. Now, what is so in special and important about Palm Sunday? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? And I will tell you why. On In John, from the Bible, in John chapter 12, verses uh, 12 through 15. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. So Palm Sunday is the day we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem during his last week. And so, typically we have palm branches that we hang out, um, we hand out, we take them home, we remember, and we um, sing triumphant, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Well today, because we can't hand out palm branches, I borrowed these from my mother-in-law, Lisa, because I don't have any palm branches at home. I don't even have any green branches on my trees. So I'm borrowing these, but I'm going to show you a quick way of how to make your own palm branch with some household items. So what you're going to need 
is some paper. I found green paper. It doesn't necessarily have to be green paper, but you can color it green. You're going to need paper, scissors, any type of tape or glue, an adhesive, and cardboard, and a pen. So what you're going to do is with your paper, you're going to take your hand, your non-dominant hand, so most of you that will be your left hand, and you're going to trace your hand on the paper like I did here. Okay? So you're going to trace your hand, and you're going to need about probably six or seven hands. Okay? So once you have your hands traced, then you take the scissors and you cut them out. Um, so you have cut out of handprints. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to arrange them in a palm leaf shape. So you just overlap them around this little circle until you have a shape that you want. And then you tape them all together or glue them if you have glue. And then you take your cardboard and you tape it to the back because the cardboard is how you hold it. And then you can decorate it. So I decorated mine with Hosanna in the highest, Palm Sunday 2020. And so this is just an easy way that we can make our own palms and we can place them around our house and we can remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So take your palms and wave them around and say, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is our King and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So if you have real palm branches, though, feel free to use them and decorate them around your house or um, on your mailbox. Any way people can see them so they can remember that it is Palm Sunday as well. Because Palm Sunday is a very important week. It's kind of the kickoff parade um, to the rest of this Holy Week. As we remember Jesus' last week. Um, before the cross. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the reminders uh, as you entered into the city to lay down your life, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you have given us. Help us to remember um, your sacrifice for us and what it means to us, Lord. I just thank you for all these children and their families and our church family and everyone watching. We just ask that you bless them on this day. And uh, just bless our week as we remember your sacrifice on the cross. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, bye, guys. See you next week. Yet not I, but through Christ in me.
for 254 years, this congregation has gathered together on Sunday mornings through the Revolutionary War, through the War of 1812, through the Civil War, through two world wars and every war since. At no time in the long history of this congregation do we read that the doors were not open for worship, even during the pandemic of 1918, which was called the Spanish flu, which infected over a third of the people on the planet, took the lives of over 50 million people, including approximately 675,000 people here in America. At that time, churches in more densely populated areas of the country did close their doors for worship, but here in rural Pennsylvania, our records do not show that our doors were closed. Our church doors have not been closed for any reason for 254 years. For Sunday morning worship. It yet And yet now here we are for our fourth Sunday in a row with no real end in sight with a sanctuary that has been empty of its congregants. And, and quite frankly for those who love the church and I'm not talking about a particular congregation, I'm talking about church with a capital C, the Worldwide Christian Church. For those who love the church, this is hard. Now, for those of you who maybe have never really connected with a congregation, the only way that I can explain it to you is as to why it's so hard is because these individual groupings of people called congregations become, they become family to us. I mean, maybe even healthier and more helpful to us than our biological families for a variety of reasons, none of which have to be negative. Being apart from your church family, being apart from one another as we are right now, even though we know it is necessary, it's hard. So here's the thing, G gathering together on a Sunday morning is a good and a beautiful habit, isn't it? It's a weekly rhythm of the lives of committed followers of Jesus Christ. And for some, it has been a lifetime rhythm of Sunday mornings for 80 or 90 plus years. And we miss that good and beautiful rhythm in our lives from the youngest ones in our congregation to our senior adults. And it's especially hard because the times that we're living in are very challenging. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much bad news about COVID-19 in the world and in the nation and in our state and in our communities and our workplaces and in our homes too. There is financial hardship that is already hitting many of our homes. And it's true, isn't it, that in challenging times and times of uncertainty, we, we want to be together. We, we feel a great need to be together. I mean, even though we acknowledge that in this time apart, we are learning good things, we are learning important things, we still have to acknowledge, even right now, that it's just hard to be apart. And even more so because this is a very special Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, the Sunday that we remember Jesus' ride down the Mount of Olives through the throngs of people who were waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! This word of, of joy and this word of praise for deliverance that has already and is yet coming. Hosanna, it's a word of joy. It's a, it's a word of praise for deliverance that has already come and is yet coming.
coming. And the crowd shouted, Hosanna, as Jesus rode past them on his way up into Jerusalem to prepare for the Passover festival with his disciples. Now, as a congregation, we're used to having palm fronds that we give to all the kids and then the kids walk around the sanctuary and hand them out to everybody as we're all singing Hosanna loud Hosanna the little children sang I mean that's our tradition that's what we have done and that's what we do it's it's how we remember this day in our faith history and it's so important because if we don't remember then we forget. So let's listen together to the scripture that tells us the story of Palm Sunday. I'm going to read it this morning from Luke chapter 19, verses 29. 29 to 40. As he approached Bethphage, meaning Jesus, and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road, which is a sign of welcoming royalty. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Now I want to read also from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet them, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King! of Israel. Now, what's happening here? After three incredible years, three incredible, miraculous, and yet very challenging years of ministry, of Jesus caring for people, healing people, loving people, teaching, explaining God's love to people, Jesus is now making his final approach to the cross, which he knew all along was his destination. And so once the colt was acquired, once the two disciples had thrown their clo cloaks onto the colt, the Bible tells us that they put Jesus on the colt. It very clearly does not say that Jesus threw one leg over and, and got himself onto the colt or that he jumped up side saddle and took a ride. On the colt. We clearly have words that remind us of Jesus's obedience to the Father, to the Father's plan, the Father's will to save us in a particular way. These disciples put their teacher, their mentor, their rabbi, their friend, their savior, though they didn't really understand all that at the time, he allowed them to put him on the colt that led him right into the hornet's nest, that led him to unbelievable physical, emotional, and mental suffering on behalf of you and me. Jesus submitted himself to God's plan, allowing his own disciples to put him on the colt, the one in whom all things were created, visible and invisible. Jesus, the one who is before all things and in whom all things hold together, we read in Colossians chapter 1, verses 5 to 17. He allowed these two disciples 
to be part of this magnificent plan to put him onto this cult that had been prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before. Jesus didn't stop the crowds from shouting Hosanna because he knew that they were still looking for this perfect king who would deliver them from their enemies. From the time of King Saul, their first king, to King David, to all the kings that followed, both good and bad, Israel was, they were still looking for that one king who would set the world awry, aright by putting God's chosen people back into a place of prominence and power. So Jesus allowed them to, to shout and to celebrate as he came down the Mount of Olives before going back up into the city of Jerusalem, even though he knew that what they wanted from him was not what he came to give them. Jesus didn't come to put them or us or anyone back on top. He didn't come to make everything go the way you just want it to go. He didn't come to make our lives trouble-free when we trust in him. Jesus came to establish a kingdom, a victorious kingdom, yes. But it was not an earthly kingdom. Jesus came to establish a, a spiritual kingdom filled with people like you and like me whose souls, and the soul is the core of who we are apart from our physical selves, he came to establish a spiritual kingdom for people like you and me whose souls are crying out for true freedom and for true peace. And as part of that spiritual kingdom, he came to establish a spiritual family filled with men and women and boys and girls, people like you and me with Jesus as the head of the family, Jesus as the source of life, for the family, people whose hearts cried out to him for acceptance, for forgiveness, for mercy, for grace, and for love. And as part of that kingdom, he came to establish a spiritual army. If I had my PowerPoint right now, I would have up on the PowerPoint that Jesus came to establish a spiritual kingdom he came to establish a spiritual family. He came to establish a spiritual army filled with people like you and me who have been called up. People who understand that though victory has already been won on the cross of Calvary, we've already defeated the works of the devil and all of his schemes on the cross. We understand that we still need to keep advancing his message of victory over the darkness to people who are living as if defeat is inevitable for their lives because they believe that God is not real or if God is real, he is not good. Or if he is real and if he even is a little bit good, he's still not interested in their lives and in their eternal destination if there even is such a place, such a thing as an eternal destination. I'm here to remind you, I'm here to tell you that God is real and that God is good and that God is not just interested in your life, but that God died to prove and to secure your eternal destiny. That's how interested God is in your life and in your eternal destiny. The God of the Bible, the God of history, he knows and he cares about every detail of your life. He, he knows when you rise up and when you lie down. He knows the words that are on your tongue before you speak them. He knows your anxious thoughts. He knows about your doubts. He knows about your fears. He knows the things that make your heart sing. He knows that his family is struggling today because we cannot be together in one place, waving palm fronds together. But he also knows that there are so, so many more who long for a family like the one who gathers in our sanctuary. A physical family, yes, 
but even more than that, a, a spiritual family who are together in faith and hope and love because of our common faith in Jesus Christ, the King of the eternal kingdom. And so today, because of the gift of technology, the crowd that is waving virtual palm branches has, has swelled, <coughs> excuse me, swelled quite a bit worldwide. And some are excited and some are skeptical and some are just sort of holding back, looking, pondering, wondering, observing. As Jesus humbly and resolutely and compassionately passes by on this historical Palm Sunday 2020. On his way to a Passover meal with his beloved disciples. On his way to betrayal by Judas. To denial by Peter. To abandonment by all of his disciples. To questioning by Pontius Pilate and trial by Herod, to whipping and mocking and spitting by the Roman soldiers, to the unbelievable task of, task of having to, to carry his own cross up a hill in a weakened and bloody condition all the way to crucifixion and death. And it all starts by him allowing these disciples to put him on that colt like the one that carried him and his mother to the little town of Bethlehem. Friends, how many times is it going to take for us to hear this story of Jesus passing by on that first Palm Sunday before we really hear it? Before we can really see him passing by? before we can really get it and let it take a hold of us. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about becoming resolute and making a decision today that when those church doors open, man, I'm going in, I'm going in, and I'm never coming out again. What I'm saying and, and what I'm asking is, is this. When are you going to take that next step? When are you going to take that next step? I mean, maybe you're one who says, yeah, I believe in God, but the Jesus part of that, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not so sure. I, I don't want to become like one of those Jesus freak people, right? I want to become extreme. And I get that. I do. I mean, many years ago, I was in that same place until Jesus passed by me one day and I knew I knew I knew that I could not let him pass me by one more time and that next step for me beyond that that day led to laying down the palm fronds that were really more for me than they were for him, led to me laying down the cloak or two of junk that I was carrying around, led to me laying down all sorts of things that I didn't need anymore once I put my faith in Jesus, things like unforgiveness, things like anger and perfectionism and people-pleasing and unholy ambitions and did I say unforgiveness? Maybe that's part of why we aren't in the building right now. Maybe we have some things that we need to lay down, that we need to let go of, that we need to release. I mean, maybe there are more of us than just me who need to lay down some stuff, including the security of our church walls, maybe for some including the reliance on our ministry staff on site so that we can join in the work of 
the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual family, the spiritual army that Jesus brought in, in a way that we never have before, bringing something forth out of us that we didn't even know was in there. I mean, we can still sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna, meaning Jesus deliver us, Jesus deliver us, as long as we are singing with the understanding of what it is that we need to be delivered from. And I think for many of us right now, what we think first and foremost we need to be delivered from is, is quarantine. It's from this disease, from this pandemic, right? I mean, some people first and foremost think right now they need to be delivered from their families. They've been stuck with them 24-7 for how many days in a row now? And they're about, ah, these people are driving me crazy. For some people, first and foremost, they think they need to be delivered from a tyrannical boss, maybe, because you've been considered an essential personnel person and, and you're being worked so hard, you've, you're, you're being worked hard like a dog. And you need to be delivered from that. Some people need to be delivered from the kids at school who are making fun of you and you thought it would stop maybe when school started stopped being on site but but it's still happening on Instagram or Snapchat or who knows what other social media and you feel like first and foremost you need to be delivered from that or maybe right now you you just think I I need be need to be delivered from from things like addictions for drugs alcohol sexual immorality swearing cheating Lying, gossiping, lo laziness, workaholism. You can name all sorts of things that, that you know you need to be delivered from. First and foremost. But I tell you, what I need to be delivered from first and foremost is my sin. I need to be delivered from myself and my own unholy wants and my pride. I mean, more than anything else, that's what threatens the flourishing of godly fruit in my life. It's the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. And I think we're all in the same boat, really. I mean, we're, we're all sinners in desperate need of of a savior and when we can get to the place folks where we have the courage to be able to, able to put our hand up and cry out Jesus deliver me and we really mean it Jesus deliver me Jesus help me Jesus save me then we are getting in the line behind Jesus that leads us all the way to the cross of Calvary and we don't turn away and we don't run away and we don't hide and we don't deny that we know him and we don't betray our commitment to follow him. In fact, on this side of history, knowing what it is that he was going to do there for us, we knowingly, we resolutely, we prayerfully, we gratefully urge him on because we know that he is doing something there for us that we simply could not ever do for ourselves. He is making peace. He made peace between us and God by his perfect blood sacrifice. And so after today, as we enter into Holy Week, we put down the palm branch and we, we pick up a nail and we follow him all the way to the place where he secured our salvation. David Crowder, Crowder wrote a song called My Victory. I'll, I'll post it a little bit later. And the lyrics go like this. You came for criminals and every Pharisee. You came for hypocrites, even one like me. 
You carried sin and shame, the guilt of every man, the weight of all I've done nailed into your hands. Oh, your love bled for me. Oh, your blood in crimson streams. Oh, your death is hell's defeat. A cross meant to kill is my victory. I pray for all of us today on this Palm Sunday, April the 5th, 2020, a day when we were gifted to gather together in a different way, in a new way, in a, a broader way than our usual way because of a global pandemic called COVID-19. I pray that today, you do not let him pass you by without stepping out from the crowd, stepping out from the crowd and putting your hand up and saying, wait, wait, I want to go with you. 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 Oh, how I want to go with you. Please let me go with you. Let's pray together, okay? Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Some of us have been running and hiding and pretending and avoiding this day. When we knew you would pass by, but we're just struggling with letting go. We want you to take us now and mold us and make us into the person that you see we can be. But we confess, Lord, that we are nervous about that. We are afraid that we will disappoint you, that we will fail, that we will fall, that we will flounder. Forgive us for our lack of trust not just in you, but in our own ability to stay on track. Help us. Call us, Lord. See us as we put our hand up and ask to be with you, to stay with you as you are already with us. Oh, Lord, would you take our new yes today in this new time in our lives, a new yes to do and be everything that you need and want us to be, to follow you, Jesus, to become more like you in thought and word and deed, to carry your message wherever it is that you send us. Lord, in this moment, we lay down the old and we receive the new. We put our faith in Jesus Christ anew, the King of this glorious kingdom the head of this amazing family, and the commander of this victorious army. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace today and every day. Together, we pray for this world, for our leaders, the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the exhausted, the essential workers who are pressing on We pray for answers, for treatment, for the virus to stop spreading, for the curve to flatten as we all do our part, for the equipment that is needed while we wait. Please help us, Lord, not to be worriers, not to worry about our finances, 
but to trust that there will be a responsible way forward. Help us to help each other. Help us to love each other, to care for each other in whatever way we can and still keep each other safe. May our patience during this time be expanded in supernatural ways as we wait for you, as we take heart, and as we wait for you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming for us, for passing by in front of us, for your patience in waiting for us. Thank you for the gift of our salvation, one for us on the cross of Calvary. This we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are now going to move into a time of confession before we share communion together on this Palm Sunday. So let's bow our heads together. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us always in all places. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your grace that gives us opportunities to grow and learn from the mistakes that we make and yet still be yours, still be loved and accepted by you perfectly and completely. Hear us as we confess now our sins against you and against our neighbor silently. Amen. Give thanks to God that his mercies are new every morning, that his compassions, they fail not, that as far as the east is from the west, that is how far God has removed our transgressions from us. Know that you are forgiven, and may you be restored to peace in this very moment. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this, remembering me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant that's sealed in my blood and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Every time we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again one day in glory. I pray that as you share communion together with your church family from all over the place that the Holy Spirit would come in a new and full way to all of us that we might sense a uniting of our love for each other and our love for the Lord as we share together this meal. Lord, I pray that this meal would be a true communion true communion for all of us of the body and blood of our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. 
It's in his name we pray as we share together this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may share the meal together.
Hear these words as we complete our time of worship today. This is from Jesus Today from Sarah Young. I, the Sovereign Lord, am your strength. You are keenly aware of your weakness. You know that your strength is insufficient to handle the many challenges you face. Though this feels uncomfortable, it is actually a very blessed place to be. Awareness of your neediness can help you keep turning to me, letting me supply all of your need according to my riches and glory. Thanks be to God, church. Amen.